It's time to present Scott Dupont to bring you another episode of Finance Your Movie with tips and strategies to help you get your money to tell your story. It's time! All right, we're back with another episode this week, and I am thrilled to have with me the writer producer of a really cool film I just saw called Faith Wins. We have with us today John Pate. Welcome, John. Thank you, Scott. It's great to be here. Um, so first of all, I want I want to kind of talk about the film a little bit and then find out how it came about. Um, John Michael Hightower was the was the director, correct? Correct. And then the other writer producer, Rich Natoll. Um, I do not know him. I've heard of him. Um, he's a stand-up comedian or an, uh, yes. a guy who does a lot of impressions. Rich Natoli is a stand-up comic and impressionist. Uh, I've known him for over 40 years now. We started out in L.A. together. And he, uh, over the, the decades, he moved around the country from the Bay Area down to Los Angeles, down to Florida. And now he's stationed in Las Vegas and does a show there. He has he has both a live show in Las Vegas and he also has a a radio program there in Las Vegas. Awesome. I I had known the name but I had never seen him and I was very very impressed. He's he's great in the movie. And uh is this based on a true story? It it, it parallels a story. I wouldn't say it's based on a true story. It's true that the story came to to Rich Natoli. I had been on his radio show probably a dozen times and during those appearances he he said well i'm going to backtrack just a little bit he's a brand new christian he well not brand new but he came to christ about three three and a half years ago something like that and he knew that i was a christian he knew that i was a clean entertainer and had had been doing that in hollywood for 40 plus years and he said after one of the radio programs, he said, I have this story. It, it kind of came to me and uh, it's, you know, it's a good story, but I've never written a screenplay before. And I said, well, I've written a lot of screenplays if you want to try to put it together. So he sent me a synopsis of the story and we just, we started collaborating on it. And I, I started putting it down on paper and sending it to him scene by scene. And before you know it, after about two or three scenes, the screenplay started writing itself. And the characters started to evolve and, and different people in Las Vegas that we were thinking of or different characters, we gave them a name. But uh, it, it all originated out of, of his journey to find Christianity, to find Christ. And then also his... Uh, uh, just his path there in Las Vegas every day driving to and from the studio and seeing a lot of homeless people in Las Vegas. So it just kind of grew out of that. Very cool. And uh, by the way, you don't have to be a Christian or, or looking for a Christian film if you just want to see a really, really cool story, because I think it's very timely with the homeless element in there. And it's just a very positive inspiring story which i i enjoy those kind of movies because there's so much uh, political stuff the the news topics today and so many dark negative films um not not that i judge anyone for whatever film they want to make but it's just a great film and and some of the characters that stole the show uh our mutual friend jeff big daddy wayne i thought was awesome yes. rich little pretty yes. awesome to see the living legend himself yeah. uh there and then the guy I think stole the show was James E. Clark. Jim Clark did a great, great job as uh, as one as kind of the leader of the homeless camp, and and uh, uh, he actually has several films right now too, uh, uh, both screenplays that are in different festivals. Uh, he he did a great job. Bruce Baum, of course, uh, Bruce uh, played uh, uh, Beanie. Uh, the guy that first befriended uh, Rich Natoli or the, mm -hmm. the character Billy Rizzo. So between the three of them, they just, they just tore it up. And uh, of course, Rich Little playing himself. We ended up calling in a lot of favors from, 
Las Vegas performers and headliners and, and Jeff, Big Daddy Wayne, uh, Jeff did a great job as the uh, entertainment director who had to turn down Billy and say, there's no place for you anymore. And it, it was, you know, when we describe it to people and even our distributor describes the film as it's a, it's a riches to rags to riches redemption story. And, yeah. uh, and that's more, more of a way to describe it for mainstream audiences than anything else. Yeah, and and um, if you have a great story, and you pull in these really incredible actors, you have a great film. Uh, you said you pulled in a lot of favors. What was the final budget on this film? We brought it in for just a little less than fifty thousand dollars, which wow was, was phenomenal to be able to get all of the permits and all of the locations that we had to get. Even when we say we called in favors, um, I, I taught for 25 years at uh, California Baptist University, and I had just retired, and I called them and I said, we need some locations that look like this, that look like this, that look like this, both indoors and outdoors, and they gave us the opportunity to, uh, uh, to, to film there. The city of Riverside, I call the city councilman that I knew and was friends with. He streamlined my my permit, uh, 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 film permit for that location. We called in favors in Las Vegas with both uh, casino equipment people and, and uh, television studio people there to be able to use facilities. They donated it to our, our film. So a Remar lot of- Remarkable. Helps. Remarkable. I mean, it, 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 it looks five times that budget. Well, thank you. Thank you. We, we wanted it to be as, as realistic and genuine as possible. Now, is Rich, Rich Little's not SAG? So, so these guys, you didn't have to play under a SAG after contract, correct? Well, all of the, well, we have, uh, we have 14 SAG actors in the film. Oh, and, so uh, e even going SAG, you kept it under 50K? Under 50K because wow. you can do... Uh, what is called a, a Screen Actors Guild waiver, and and you can you can sign the waiver, do the independent film or the independent project based on your agreement with the independent producer to do it under the guidelines, but yet at the same time not have to pay the SAG wages on that. Oh, okay. So this this is like actually below the ultra low budget. So yes, you came to terms with wh whether yeah. or not you want to pay Big Daddy a big burger and five bucks or whether you want to pay in the rate, you can make an agreement and uh, wow. And yes. And still be able to do that. There are a lot of TV shows that do that. I know that even uh, we patterned our agreement after uh, the TBN Huckabee contract, because to do the Huckabee show, you sign a waiver. It's interesting because the people who are guests on the show, they don't get paid a penny. They signed yeah. their waiver for that, and but being on the crew, I do also do the warm ups for the show uh, on a periodic basis. To be on the crew, you get scale, but to be a guest on the show, you sign the yeah. union waiver, and uh, you don't get yeah you you would not be compensated for the appearance. They consider that to be, uh, I guess, some sort of exchange in, in benefits of yeah. promoting promoting your your cause. So, so under 50 K, I won't get into whether or not yeah. you pay them five bucks a sandwich, whatever you did, that's, that's your business. But is there any kind of step clause in there? If the movie becomes successful, they get residuals. The, or is it a buyout the, sort of? Yeah, it, it's just, it's a straight buyout. Um, now, of course, you know, if this film makes millions of dollars, we're going to turn around and we're going to go back through every single contract and, uh, and send them money. Um, I, I was like the Blair Witch that, kids. I, I yeah exactly. I will tell you this: there are members that both you and I know that after we wrote them a check, they turned around and donated it back to the film. Wow! And we were just it's, it blew us away that uh, that many of our mutual friends wow. turned around and donated their paycheck back to getting the film done. Awesome. Yeah. So in terms of distribution. Um, I, I saw the film on YouTube. Is that still the best place to watch the film? 
There are six different uh, venues now. The uh, uh, We started out with a couple. Uh, it's on G-A-G-O Roku. And then it is also on G-A-G-O YouTube. But then we, they have called us back since it's, it's in the first two weeks, it got so many views. They started promoting it and pitching it. It's going to be on 24 flicks at the end of March. It is going to be on UDU, UDU Digital, the end of this month, the end of February. And then it is already on Hoopla Digital, and it is already on uh, VUDU slash Fandango. So it's awesome. On, it's on all of those, and it's available in public libraries in all of North America, the United States and Canada. Uh, if you wow, have a library, congratulations. You can do it there. So our distributor, they did a phenomenal job. It's Green Apple Entertainment. And it's a very interesting thing. I, I didn't know this process because I'd never been the executive producer of a film. But at the uh, uh, NRB convention, National Religious Broadcasters Convention, they held it in Nashville at the Opryland Hotel. And all of these distributors go in and they do what is called a pitch-a-thon. And they have about 20 some odd tables set up and you go, or they ring a bell after 15 minutes, you go over, you make your pitch in 15 minutes, you ring a bell, you go to the next table. And uh, so you go in and you pitch your project. No, 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 hold, hold on just a minute. Is this, is this pitching a project for cash or pitching a finished film for distribution? Both, because if it is in development and a group like Pure Flix loves the idea they'll say we'll buy the idea and we'll take you know if you've got the screenplay or they'll say send us the screenplay they might buy it outright if you have a finished product which we had uh, we, we were in the process of editing it when i went to these meetings and i said uh, i said our film is done it's in the can we're just in the process of editing it we ended up with excuse me we ended up with four distributors that really liked it. Wow. And so we, we submitted it to all four of them. And the one that gave us the best deal was the Green Apple Entertainment. And uh, they worked on it with us for about three and a half months to get the final editing uh, done. We kept trimming it down and, and cutting out a little bit of, you know, a little bit of fat and cutting out a little bit of a few of the places that it would drag. And uh, we ended up with the uh, end result of a film just a little bit under an hour and a half, which is, I guess, great for film time. And uh, they uh, they uh, put it up for streaming as of now, two and a half weeks ago. Yeah, I just saw it about a week ago. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. the National Religious Broadcasters? It, yeah, it's called NRB, National Religious Broadcasters Convention. They have it every year in different places. This past year, it was at the Opryland Hotel in Nashville. Great, great to know for any indie filmmakers out there who might have a faith-based um, type of film and they're looking yes. for money or yes. looking for completion. If, if you are looking for the, the, the venue, no, well, not the venue, if you're looking for the channels to get that into the, the, the jet stream of entertainment, the NRB convention is a place to go for their pitch -a -thon. Excellent. Thanks for the tip. Hopefully uh, some audience uh, listening will jump on that. So getting back to the 50K or just under 50K, um, how did you raise that? Uh, I know I know it's a little bit of money, but still cash is cash. How, how did you right. get that money? Both Rich and I, we did concert dates. We did live concert dates. We would book them at churches. We did them at two different theaters. We did them at, uh, at different venues all around the Southeast where I live now in Tennessee, Alabama, uh, over in Nashville. Uh, we also did live shows there in Las Vegas where Rich is stationed. And we raised the money through just people uh, donating through the, uh, uh, the concert dates and stuff. In interesting. So you're basically barnstorming. You set this up almost like a fundraiser type live show yeah. yeah obviously the people buying the tickets knew that uh were, were, were the venues favorable like taking less of a cut and and letting you keep more since you were using this to try to make your film they donated it yeah they wow. they would 
Yes, they donated their space to us. Oh my God. In fact, even the venue where we did the premiere in Las Vegas, the Notoriety Theater, which is a big theater downtown on Fremont Street, they donated the evening to us so that we wow. could have the premiere. Uh, everybody has just, they, they've opened their doors, they've opened their pocketbooks. Even after these concerts of over, were over, Rich and I would have these, he would have DVDs for sale. I had a novel that I wrote. I would sell that and autograph it. People would come and, you know, they would, they would pay for whatever it was, the DVD or, or the book. And then they would still give us extra money and say that we believe in what you're doing. This is for your film. Wow. It was, it was phenomenal that, uh, that people just really wanted to, uh, to pitch in and be a part of the, pro the project. Truly, truly a grassroots uh, campaign that you and Rich connected uh, with, with the people there. So, so all, the, yeah. all, all this money was raised. Yeah. No, no kickstart or anything. This is, this is basically a hundred percent of your budget right there. Well, we, we did, we put one on and, and uh, it, the, it wasn't a Kickstarter. I forget what. Indiegogo, Seed and Spark. Go, go fund me or something. Okay. Rich, put it, Rich put it up and we put it up and we, we got no, we got no traffic. Well, we got a little bit of traffic, but I mean, we're, you're talking just a few hundred dollars and we're thinking this is not going to do yeah, it. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough these days because so many people are doing that. So many yeah. people. And so we decided uh, that I believe that people may not trust those types of things. So we decided it's going to be grassroots. We're going to give them a show. We're going to give them a product. We're going to explain it in person. And that type of result was a hundred times better than what we could have ever gotten with a, a Kickstarter type thing. Absolutely. And, and you did it and you made the movie. So congratulations. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah. So I, I just said one. Oh, go ahead. We want everybody to go and see it. What we're trying to do with the, the distributor after the first week and they saw how many hits the film got, they said, this is rivaling some of the top tier movies that we've put out in terms of people going to view it. Now we have our PR machines, every single one of the people who are in the film because they are performing all the time and they all have their own uh, social media uh, uh, presence they've been doing our PR for us, but the, the distributor said, we don't know how you're doing it. We don't know how you're getting the message out there, but this is rivaling some of the top tier films that are being put out right now in terms of, of viewership. Wow. So we decided that every single PR chance we get, every radio show that Rich does, every podcast, every radio show that I do, we are challenging everybody to tell 10 people we want a hundred thousand views by the end of the month. Well, we've got we have forty one thousand plus right now, so we're we're on our way. So, so the two or three people watching us right now on this show, finance your movie, yeah. go. <laughs> no, a lot, a <laughs> lot more than that. I don't know how yeah. many. Some weeks we have a lot of people. Our millionaire Excellent. flicks is very, uh, very loyal. But uh, please make sure you go see Faith Wins. I just saw it last week uh, and absolutely loved it. And it's it's uh, free. You can view it for free right now on G A G O YouTube, uh, and the, 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 all of the others they they have some sort of uh, membership thing or subscriber thing. But if you want to view it for free, you can go to to G A G O YouTube and and view it. Yeah, that that's kind of cool. I think I think if you just type in Faith Wins on YouTube, you'll automatically find it, and that is the the yeah. G A channel you mentioned. Yes. yes. And 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 I'm guessing you're getting paid since it is free, you're getting paid a little bit of that uh, ad revenue or your distributor is. The ad revenue, they, and that was another thing that they told us they found very interesting. The, the way the ad revenue works, they've got these uh, commercial breaks throughout the entire film. And they said the commercials at the end of a film, when it is ad revenue, pay more than the commercials at the beginning of a film. And they said it's very odd to see what's happened in your film because they they call it flow through they say your flow through which means people watch it until the end of the film your flow through the percentage of that is really really high and and that's very odd for a, an independent 
new film too. So yeah, we're getting we're getting uh, getting people to watch it to the end. And I it, I'm going to go back to something that you said earlier. It is the story. People watch for the story. Obviously, we tried to get our compelling characters to be believable, compelling. You know, we, we wanted them uh, to be believable characters. But we want the audience to sit there and say to themselves, what comes next? How do they deal with this? How do they deal with adversity? How do they overcome this? What's going to happen in the next scene? So we wanted that story to be of utmost importance so that people would watch it to the end. Yeah, and it's so timely. I mean, I have... You and I both probably have friends, never in a million years, you would think they would lose their job or lose their home, but it, it, it does happen to the best of us. I mean, it can it, happen. It happens, to, it happens to everyone and a little surprise. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of a spoiler at the very end of the film. If you watch it to the very end of the film, you will actually see the real rich Natoli baptism where. Oh, that's he, right. He received Christ and he said, I would like for the, even though I'm playing the character, Billy Rizzo, I would like for this to be at the end of the film. So people see that this is real. This is something that's true. That's right. That That's why I asked you at the beginning of this true, true story, because yeah. I, I, I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. So um, before we wrap up here, um, thank you so much for being on the show, John. Any well, advice you would give to a first time feature filmmaker about bringing their vision to life just like you and rich did i've probably got two or three bullet point things one is do all of the research that you can to be able to stay within the guidelines of things like sag the guidelines of any type of permitting that you need number two Try to use as many resources as you already have. Uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, I got to use my university, but I also got to use my brother-in-law's church for the little tiny church scenes. Uh, use as many resources that you have at your disposal. And number three, if you believe in the project, if you believe that this project is worthwhile, you stick with it no matter what anybody says. Most of the time you have 90 people telling you no, 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 no. And, and uh, we've experienced that in entertainment. All of my mutual friends in entertainment will tell you that you get 90 no's out of 100 to 10 yeses. And, uh, but you don't let that deter you at all. Uh, in this particular case, Again, Rich and I were commenting that everybody that we asked to be in the film said yes. And we we didn't have a single character or we didn't have a single person turn us down when we called uh, called on them to be in the film. In fact, this is a little side note. Uh, after we finished this and the film was released and we had a premiere in Las Vegas, Rich Natoli went over to see uh, Wayne Newton's show and uh, because he's, he used to open for Wayne Newton, Oh wow! And and after the show was over, they were in the dressing room, and he was telling them about the film. And Wayne Newton said, "Rich, if you had told me that you were doing it, <laughs> I would have been in your film." And so wow. even he would have done it, you know. Wow. So it, it's just uh, uh, it was again something where you you if you believe in it, follow through with it, and and don't let anything deter you. Yeah, great advice. Well, you got Rich Little and, and an amazing cast all the way around. So congratulations, everybody. Make sure you see Faith Wins. Um, thanks again, John. Is is there any way that people can follow you personally? Uh, um, any contact information you want to uh, share? Well, I, I, have, I have a humble little website. It's paidcomedy.com. Uh, you can if if you scroll through that, you just simply see the, the credits and the resume and stuff. Uh, I will say this, that we are making this film available for movie nights for different churches and different civic organizations. We've already had several of them. So if anybody wants to contact me uh, for kind of an outreach movie night, 
I will work with them to bring it to their church. We show it free of charge and they can do uh, at the very end of it, they can do a free will offering if they want to, to defer the cost of uh, whatever the travel is. But uh, I will bring it to the church free of charge so that wow. if they want to invite people who have never been inside church doors before. I'll come and show the film and uh, and uh, make it available to people. And for that, they can contact me by my email. And and I will give you my email. It's j o h n dot p a t e two the number two at sbcglobal.net. Great. And if they contact me and and they they want to have an outreach night, then we'll set it up. That's too good of too good of an offer to refuse. And and your website was patecomedy.com, p a t e patecomedy.com, patecomedy.com. Yeah. Okay, uh, John, thank you so much. I hope the film thank continues you. to uh, bring in record numbers of views, and uh, hopefully, a lot of our audience will check it out. Have a it great day. Fun being on the show. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks for listening. And remember, it's hard. There's never been a better time to make your own indie film. And if you have a dream project you're excited about and 100% committed to getting it funded, go to financeyourmovie.com and click on the green telephone button. You'll see our calendar, and if you find an open spot, grab it. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one call with me or one of my partners. It will be the best hour you've ever spent getting clarity and strategy towards financing your movie. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.